You're listening to Side Hustle Pro, the podcast that teaches you to build and grow a side hustle from passion project to profitable business. And I'm your host, Nikayla Matthews. So let's get started. Hey guys, it's Nikayla coming to you in the middle of how to make a living doing what you love month. I thought I would pop in and try something new here because I've been getting a lot of questions here and there, and I'd love to just share my answers on the podcast so it can benefit those of you who are wondering the same thing. And I know some of you have to be wondering the same thing. So I'm going to try to do more of these, maybe like once a month or so. That's if you find it helpful. So If you find it helpful, let me know. And that honestly is what will determine if I keep these up. I obviously can't get to every question all in one episode. That's why I want to do more than one. So please don't be offended or be discouraged if I didn't get to your question today. There will be future episodes. And let me also just say that I saw I put out a call on social media for even more questions and I saw several legal and accounting questions come in. Now, you guys know I am not an attorney or a legal expert. And as such, I want to wait to address those particular questions for a time when I actually have an attorney or a CPA in the guest chair. And, you know, not to worry, I'm actually putting together an episode like that ASAP because I know you guys are eager to know when to trademark and how to report your income to the IRS and all of that. So I want to let you know that that is coming and I've heard you. I'm not just skipping over your questions, but again, I've done a lot of freestyle stuff in my business, um, grinding, learning on the go. I've made some mistakes as I go. So I would not want anyone to, you know, Just follow exactly what I've done when there's a better and more beneficial way to do things legally. So wait for that. It's coming. Now, before we jump into the questions that I am going to get into, I want to let you know that this podcast is brought to you by FreshBooks. As a newly established business, I am benefiting a ton from FreshBooks. So FreshBooks has made keeping track of my expenses and outstanding invoices super straightforward. So no more having paperwork and receipts all over the place. With FreshBooks, I can spend less time getting organized and more time side hustling, which you guys know is key. And if you want to create and use branded invoices like I've been able to do, then FreshBooks has a special offer for you, my Side Hustle Pro listeners. You can get a free, unrestricted 30-day trial of FreshBooks. Just go to freshbooks.com slash Side Hustle Pro and enter Side Hustle Pro in the how did you hear about us section. Don't forget that part because it is key to get that 30-day trial. Now, let's get into today's questions. All right, number one. What are good resources for researching your target market effectively to include in your business plan? So first of all, congrats to you on working on your business plan. Um, I'm going to share some things that I've used to research my target market, but I also want to emphasize for this, you the reason you're exploring your target market is you want to validate your concept, right? You want to know that there is indeed a market for this and be able to prove that. And you want to test outside of your bubble to make sure that, you know, you're not just talking to a bunch of people who are like you and have the same needs as you, but might not represent a larger market. At the same time, you don't want to turn this into an academic exercise that prevents you from taking action because I've seen people do this. Sometimes we get so caught up in creating a pretty business plan and actually creating pretty slide decks and we're not taking action. And the action part is what's really going to make you learn, right? So as far as researching your target market, like start basic, start with Google, Google your industry, Google the product concept, see what's out there, see what's similar to what you're offering and what kind of people are attracted to this offer. What are the customers like? How can you learn about that? You can see who's leaving reviews, who's talking about this on things like Quora, right? Q-U-O-R-A, even Reddit. Definitely check out what people are saying on Facebook, on Twitter, on Instagram. Another thing you can do when you've done a lot of this research on your competitors, you will probably start getting targeted by ads on Facebook and Instagram. So something I like to do is to actually save ads 
One, it gives me ideas for future ads that I might do. I also like to look into the comments to see what type of questions people have, what kind of pain points they share that they're having and the reason they're attracted to the product or the reason they're not happy with the product, right? Um, that's very enlightening. So dip into those Facebook ads, look at what people are talking about, and then you want to ultimately get on the phone with a few people, talk to people in this target audience. Now, how you're going to get on the phone with these people, it will vary. It will depend on the audience. And if you are close to that audience, meaning you can start to reach out to people via your network. So either you know people who fall into this fit, into this um, audience or you know people who know people. So you're going to have to send some cold messages, some cold emails on Facebook, on Instagram. I treat social media networking, like real life networking. I often say this. So you're going to have to reach out to people respectfully, ask them if they can, if you can get five to 10 minutes of their time. Oftentimes you may have one person in your entire network who is close to that target market. And then you can build from there, either reaching out to more people like them or more people in your network. But whatever you do, try to get on the phone with at least 10 people to try to get into their heads a little bit more to find out what it is that they like, don't like, their pain points. And ultimately, once you've found enough people, you can even create a survey and send that out. A note on these surveys. So because I have a Facebook group now, I see sometimes people pop into the group and they either drop their link or they ask permission to drop the link for the survey. And something that I always say is, look, I'm not really about policing people's links, but I will tell you it's not going to yield the results that you think it will. Because popping into a group, even if you think the group is filled with Black people entrepreneurs, which, by the way, Side Hustle Pro community is not just a group of Black entrepreneurs. So that's the first mistake, being lazy about your targeting. Even if you think the group is for that, like there's so many nuances between people of a certain race, of a certain gender, of a certain age, that you really have to be more proactive about getting to know specifically those people's interests and who you're targeting. So if you join a Facebook group because you think people may be interested in your industry or your product, do still identify a few select people in the group to target and to ask questions. And don't just think like a broad survey is going to help you because you'll just get back really vague answers and it will not be helpful at all. So I hope that makes sense. What I'm really trying to say is don't be lazy take time, reach out to people, get on the phone, and then don't overthink it either. Because most importantly, you want to take action based on your initial findings. All right. Number two, do you recommend having more than one side hustle at a time? I was surprised to see this question come in because I just did an episode on this. So I'll touch on it briefly, but um, I go into more depth in episode 39, where I talk about why you need to focus on one side hustle at a time. So you need to focus on one side hustle at a time if you want to make serious progress, serious gains in your business. And yes, I think of my side hustle as a business because it is. And my version of a side hustle is not some people's version of a side hustle. But I always make it very clear that around these parts, Side Hustle Pro is not just something you do for fun. It's something you one day plan to monetize. And as you know, monetizing something takes time and effort. And you can't really be putting in that time and effort on two, three, four different things, right? You can't really be effective if you're focused everywhere. So that's why you really need to hone in on one thing, get good at one thing, establish your expertise in that one thing. And that builds up credibility for when you start something else. You'll see oftentimes that a lot of serial entrepreneurs, they went in and laser focused on one business for several years before they sold it or moved on. And then as they're building out their next business, they have credibility. They're known as the founder of X and they've pivoted into this next thing. But that the fact that they focused and did so well building up one thing adds to their credibility to do this other thing. And just keep in mind that you don't want to be this jack or jill of all trades and master of none. So again, I go into even more depth in episode 39. So if you didn't hear it, go on over and check that out after this episode. Next question. 
What are the other measures to use aside from profit to know when it's time to leave your full-time job? Ooh, this is a fun one. Okay, so this really depends on you and your risk tolerance. You've heard from several different guests on the show, right? And you know, some people have waited till they had a lot of money in the bank before they went out and finally did their own thing. And some people just quit and that helped them to figure it out because they had that pressure of like, okay, I have no plan B. I have to make this work. So a lot of times when you leave will really depend on your risk tolerance. But I would say if it was me, And, you know, to answer this question from my perspective, I think you need to not just think about profit, but also think about what's your savings goal. Like, how much do you want to have in your rainy day fund? Should something not work out? Should something go wrong? Think about that. And then if you know that you have a low risk tolerance, set a goal, work towards that goal, and you'll feel that much more comfortable when it's time to leave. And then in terms of when it's time to leave, you mentioned profit. Well, I would say cash flow is greater than profit. So when you say profit, I'm not sure if you're referring to you were profitable uh, for a couple of months and now you're feeling good. Well, what is the cash flow of your business and income um, projection? Like, are you going to be profitable from here on out for like what kind of business model have you set up so you can ensure that you can rely on profit for the foreseeable future. So that's something I would have in place before I made any plans to leave a full-time job and also know what the market needs. Just be extremely confident in yourself and knowing what you can offer to monetize should something go wrong. Like I said, again, if you have to go back to the drawing board, rely on savings for a little bit and pivot, know what it is you're going to do to monetize and to make that income each and every month. So with these things in place, those are the other measures that you can use to assess when it's time to leave. Next question. I'm going to try to get to a few more of these. So pile them in here. All right. Number four, what's the most efficient way to market your side hustle? Um, That's an easy one. Uh, Using social media. Like social media is such low hanging fruit. It's, It's there. It's free. There's so many ways to experiment and learn what's working, what's not. All you have to do is read and all you have to do is try. All the information is out there. And I, again, treat social media networking like real life networking. Really start learning about marketing. So I can't sit here and tell you, oh, just put up, you know, two Facebook ads a day. Boom, your business will have all the marketing it needs. No, you have to really start to spend time learning about how to market, not only how to market, like what is marketing? Um, what is the psychology of marketing? And then what is the best lane for your particular business? Now, I'm someone who I've studied marketing. I've worked in marketing for a number of years and I still study what's going on in the industry. So, for example, as soon as I learn something and really feel like a master at it, I am happy to put my knowledge out there. That's why I've created my Master of the Gram course, because I'm so confident in what I've been able to do and use Instagram for as a marketing channel. However, something that I'm still learning and perfecting my expertise in are Facebook ads. So I want to be able to learn as much as I can. That's what I'm currently focused on. And then I'll be able to share, okay, this is the most efficient way to use Facebook ads. But at the moment, I'm investing in really learning about that. So I'd say, number one, look into social media, choose a platform, start with one if it's overwhelming, learn everything you can about that platform, test everything you can. And I guarantee you, you will reap what you sow. Like there's there's no way that you won't start to see progress if you truly invest the time in learning and testing. Now, I'm going to also answer this second question, which is from a different person, but I think it ties in nicely <laughs> to the whole idea of marketing your side hustle. So this person asks, how do you get the word out if you aren't using social media? Um, a few people have asked me something similar to this. And my response is, why aren't you using social media? <laughs> I 
I have no, I'm a little dumbfounded. Like if you have an aversion to social, you have to push past that. And let me tell you why. If you're telling me you want to get the word out, but you're not using social media, what you're really telling me is you don't want to get the word out. Like there's no if, ands, and buts about it. You don't want to get the word out if you're not using social media. Like it is way too accessible. Your customers, your clients, everyone you're trying to reach is on social media. So you're telling me that there's a networking event and you know people interested in what you have to offer are going to be at that networking event and you're not going to go to the event. That's what you're telling me. You have to use social media. Again, if you are overwhelmed by it, choose a lane, choose a channel. I have no qualms with saying like, look, I don't have time for Snapchat anymore. Instagram came out the gate and their stories are fire. I love it. And I'm focused on Instagram still. Like you won't find me on Snapchat anymore. You won't find me on Periscope anymore. I just don't have time for it all. So I've chosen my lane and personally for me in my business and what I'm trying to accomplish right now, it serves that purpose. If it ever stops serving the purpose where it's a great marketing channel for me, then I'm going to pivot. But that's one way that I recommend to not feel overwhelmed. And that's one way I recommend to organically get the word out. Word of mouth. And, and you know, even the phrase that you've used, get the word out. This is not like a rumor. This is not a party. Like your business is serious and you need to take it seriously. And it's not something that you want to spread via word of mouth. If it does, that's cool. That's awesome. That's the cherry on top of the icing. However, you can't depend on or measure word of mouth. Whereas with social, you can measure that. You can see what kind of posts potential customers interact with the most. And if you want to, you can even invest in advertising to test out some of your hypothesis about where your customers are, what they interact with. You can start to see even deeper insights into who your customers are. It may surprise you. Then you also get feedback on your your social media, your Facebook and your Instagram ads, and you start to see what customers are liking, what they're not liking. So for those of you who want to get the word out, please start using social media. Again, I think of it as low hanging fruit. And if you are interested in the Instagram stuff, head on over to the Side Hustle Pro Facebook group, sidehustlepro.co slash Facebook so we can talk more. If you're, you know, wanting to take it to the next level, I do also have a course. And yeah, that, that's all I can say. <laughs> Check out sidehustlepro.co slash master the gram because I just I want you guys to win. And so I feel passionately about this stuff. Like you are leaving money on the table if you're not using social. All right. The end. Next question. If you're struggling with time management and getting started, would it make sense to outsource chores and pay to build systems in your business before you even really start? Okay, let me break this down into part A and B. So part A is, you know, if you're really struggling with time management, would it make sense to outsource chores? And then part B will be about paying to build systems. So I say, if you're really struggling with time management, do understand that you can put money towards that, especially if you have a full-time income, you can cut back on some of your other, you know, fun expenses and use that to hire some help on chores. I wouldn't say get a, a weekly person, but maybe once a month just to help you out a little bit. But do know that you're not treating the core problem when you do that. And this is not to look down on anyone who gets a housekeeper because, you know, I also have invested in cleaning services once a month because it does get overwhelming to try to balance chores and everything else. However, do know that the key issue that you should always be trying to get better at is that time management. Like you can't pay and get a quick fix for that. You have to keep on working on how can I be better at managing my time? How can I learn to wake up earlier? How can I work to be more efficient at work so that I can leave on time and then spend one to two hours after work doing X? If you have kids, then, you know, that's another layer to work around their schedule and then, you know, fit in even more time that could be staying up later. Whatever it is, the time management piece is what you should always be trying to solve for. And then, yes, 
it is okay to start outsourcing chores if and only if that means you will invest more time in your business, which will then allow you to monetize and make that money back. Um, I really caution against putting a lot of money into your business with this idea that oh, I'm going to make it back soon. I'm going to start making money soon. It's OK, because what you'll find yourself with is a whole bunch of expenses. And by the time you do get that first check in your business, all of it's already pre-assigned to some bill that you have to pay back to some credit card that you have to pay off. So do be careful with going down that route. Now, to get into part B of this, you say, you know, would it make sense to pay to build systems in your business before you even really start? I say build your own systems. What systems are you referring to? I'm going to assume you're talking about, you know, some things like some administrative systems, right? Um, a workflow systems. Well, number one is in order to get the most from someone who you pay for, you really need to be able to teach them how to do it down pat. Like, this is what I want. You need to be able to explain what you want. And the best way to do that is if you've built the system yourself. Now, this person that comes in might come in and revamp and might, you know, make the system even better. But you should have a base understanding of the systems that work well for your business and for how you work and for how, you know, you operate. So do that yourself. And again, with that time management piece, discipline yourself to do it on your own for a while until you have the very beginning stages of income on the horizon before you even think of paying to build those systems, because it becomes very tempting to outsource everything, to pay for everything. And soon you'll just be paying for a lot of systems and processes and staff when you don't have income coming in. All right. Um, I was also talking about this with Moyo the other day, and he recommends two books. It's really about time investment more than anything. So the books are The E-Myth Revisited by Michael Gerber and then Work the System by, ooh, I forget who that one is by, but when I find out, I will put it in the show notes. All righty. Number seven is... How to avoid conflict between your side hustle and your nine to five. All right. This is one that I realize is also an episode. So I talk about how to side hustle and not get fired in episode 43. And that's all about how to side hustle and avoid any conflict with your nine to five. So check out episode 43 when you get a chance. My key theme there is you have to set up your hours when you're side hustling and it doesn't have to be something super intense either. Even if you just put up side one hour in the morning, one hour at night or one hour on your lunch hour, one hour at night, that's two hours a day. You add that up throughout the whole week. That's 14 hours and you can get a lot done on your business. It's 14 hours. So Instead of thinking of it as like being worried about it being a conflict, think about what you're doing outside of work. All right, number nine, we're getting close to the end for this go round of Q&A. And this has actually been really fun. If I didn't get to your question, just remember, like, I have a lot of questions. And so I'm going to start doing these episodes more regularly so that I can address more. But uh, don't be offended if I didn't get to it this go round. All right. Number nine, how do you recharge when you hit a wall in your side hustle or life in general? Okay. Okay. So the way I recharge is I have a do nothing period of my day. I think sometimes people think that I'm side hustling around the clock. And actually, that is not the case. I would go crazy if that was the case. For me, Saturdays are actually my reset days. So I usually try to accomplish one major task on a Saturday. But then after that, I'm relaxing. It's also my cheat day, you know, on my fitness plan. So I'm relaxing. I'm having a good meal. I'm hanging with my honey and I'm not grinding like I do Sunday through Friday. So that is what I would recommend as well. Like don't put pressure on yourself to to do like you see on some of these like ridiculous memes that go around on social media to like grind around the clock. No, give yourself 
permission to rest and just don't let that rest spiral into multiple days, like similar to a cheat day, like have a cheat meal or two. Do not turn it into a cheat day or a cheat month because then you become even more stressed. And, you know, that's when you really need to recharge when you have let procrastination put you in a hole of being backed up with work. So Give yourself some time, but don't let it spiral so that you won't get backed up. I also recharge with treating myself to the things and prioritizing the things that are important to me that I used to just let slip because of something else that would come up. So, for example... I love, you know, Afrobeat dance classes and every Friday I treat myself to that class and it's very easy to like say, oh, I'm tired. It's the end of the week. I just want to go home and veg. And that does happen sometimes like and there's nothing wrong with that if that's what I need that day. But for the most part, I also need this high energy class that helps me to release these endorphins and just, you know, end the week on a high note with joy. So those are the kind of things, those self-care practices that help me to recharge and just remember that, you know, life is more than just like being hunched over a desk, like grinding it out, answering emails, recording, like it's about letting loose and just enjoying the moment and experiencing pure joy sometimes. So that's another way I recharge. I treat myself to the little self-care things that make me happy, getting my nails done, getting a pedicure. So identify the things that make you feel just like that ah moment, just at peace and treat yourself to those things uh, once a week. I'm not talking about OD and like you don't need a facial every week, but <laughs> the small things that will make you happy and they, they shouldn't even have to cost a dime. Um, so there you have it. One other thing, I also try to get really deep sleep at least one day a week. So in general, I've been trying to get more sleep each and every day, but there's at least, you know, it's usually Saturday, you know, Fridays into Saturdays or Saturdays, Saturdays into Sunday where I just sleep and I get, you know, at least eight to 10 hours. Like I am knocked out and that helps me to recharge and get ready for the week ahead. And then last question for now is, how do you stay motivated? What and who inspires you? Wow. You know, I ask the who inspires you question of a lot of my guests. And I always think like, man, that's such a hard question. What would I say? So here's my chance, I guess. I'll start with the first part. How do you stay motivated? So knowing I'm not where I want to be keeps me motivated. And I don't say that to sound like selfish or I'm grateful. I think, you know, when you're really ambitious, you're always aware of that next level or the next stage that you want to get to. And so that's always how I've operated. And that's what's helped me from becoming complacent in life. So what motivates me is knowing that that next level that I want to get to. So I set really big goals and I've started keeping my goals. I've always written the goals down, but I've started keeping them really close. So I keep a version of my goals in my wallet. And whenever, you know, I'm having a down moment, I just whip that out and I, I look at it and I refresh and it helps me to remember my why, like what's the long term that I'm pushing to get to. So actually write down your goals. I highly recommend that. Keep them close and knowing that is what keeps me motivated. I know that one day I want to be able to be working from a beach, not having to ask anybody for time off and, you know, be able to travel whenever I want. And knowing that I'm not there yet keeps me motivated. And then the second part of this question, what, who inspires you? Oh, man, I thought I was buying time and that I would have a response to this by now, but... A couple of people. Okay. A couple of people inspire me. So number one is are my parents. So my parents, they have been the epitome of hard work to be my entire life. They brought us from Jamaica. They brought us to this country for a better life to get the absolute best education, the best opportunities and making them proud and, and showing them that their work is not in vain is really what 
inspires me, what keeps me motivated. And also, you know, when I'm tempted to complain, I know that, hey, I haven't had to pick up and leave my life and everyone I know and love to move to an entire different country for better opportunities. You know what I mean? Like they're the definition of sacrifice. And that inspires me because to this day, I'm like, what a what a huge sacrifice to do just for the sake of your kids. So that inspires me. I'm also incredibly inspired by people who make lemonade out of lemons. So uh, if you're in the Side Hustle Pro Facebook group, I recently shared a video of a guy in, um, I forget which country, I'm going to look it up, but essentially he came up with a powder soap that acts as a basically a powder soap that is a disinfectant that you don't need water to use to bathe in and to wash yourself. And it's for countries that are impoverished that don't have regular access to water. And then when they do have that water, they need to use it for cooking and drinking. So they don't have time to waste water and, and do these big baths and, and showers like we do in this country. And it just inspires me that here I am sometimes complaining about just dumb stuff and people are making so much out of the littlest thing and less resources. And so that inspires me to like, shut up, stop complaining and work harder. <laughs> and, you know, and that's pretty much it. All right, guys. So that's all for this edition of q and I hope you enjoyed it. Like I said, if you do, let me know. And still keep shooting me your questions. You can, you know, shoot me an email at hi at sidehustlepro.co or, you know, Instagram, Facebook, what have you. Come on over to the Side Hustle Pro Facebook group, sidehustlepro.co slash Facebook so we can talk more and I can answer more questions. And with that, there you have it. Hey, guys, thanks for listening to Side Hustle Pro. If you want to hear more from me, head on over to sidehustlepro.co forward slash side hustle corner to get my weekly side hustle diaries chronicles about my own journey from passion project to profitable business. And if you want to find me online, I'm at side hustle pro on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. Don't forget to join the Side Hustle Pro Facebook community. Go to sidehustlepro.co forward slash mastermind. And as always, if you love the show, do me a favor and subscribe, rate, and review on iTunes. Thanks, guys. Talk to you next week.